Good morning, everybody. I was very sad to hear uh, yesterday, it took place yesterday, I found out about this morning. Uh, actually, the funeral was yesterday in, in Brooklyn um, of Rabbi Herschel Kornrein, Rabbi Tzvi, Tzvi Eli Melech Ben Rav Yehuda Zev Kornreich. He was one of the most uh, distinguished Baba Verchasidim. And Abinash uh, Kadoshim, he came from from uh, from great rabbinical dynasties, and I, I know his his Rabbitson also. I know she was an anical from she's an anical from the uh, from the Divrechaim Sanzarov. I, I got to know Rabbi Kornreich. I've known him. Uh, probably 15 years. Um, I got to know him through uh, one of his sons is the Shidlovtza Rebbe from Yerushalayim. He has two sons who are at Morim, the Shidlovtza Rebbe and the Kosov, who lives in Yerushalayim, and the Kosov Vizhnitz Rebbe um, from, uh, I believe he lives in Beit Shemesh. And uh, Rabbi Kornreich was an incredible person. I spent many times staying in his house, Shabbos, and, and other times. And he just he, he, was, he was he exuded love. He you saw he cared about you. He cared about everyone who he spoke to. He was a very lovable, loving and lovable person, and you never wasted time with him. Any time you spent with him, he was sharing something valuable, sharing something meaningful. He led an amazing life. He was from auschwitz uh, which we know as Auschwitz, meaning before the war it was a Jewish town, and that's where he lived, and unfortunately he was there in the camps as well. He was 94 years old uh, when he passed away yesterday. And he'd been sick for about a week or two is when I heard, uh, you know, to be davening for him. And, uh, you know, he had just these great stories that I remember. Um, he would tell this one story, I heard it from him at least three or four times, about, you know, a legend that they had in Auschwitz scene. It was shortly after there was the story of the talking fish in New Square, and he said that there was one, there's a river that goes through Auschwitz scene, through Auschwitz. We'll call it Auschwitz scene. And that they would catch fish there, you know, that was a big, there was big commercial fishing there, not huge, I don't, but you know, some people had fish for Shabbos, you know, and the fishmongers would sell the fish that came from the river, and the fishermen would catch the fish, you know, and there was this one week when there was no fish to catch, so the fishermen took, like, a trawling net from one end of the river to the other, and were just walking down trying to catch it, and there was this one huge fish. The chip kept trying to catch the fish, and the fish would jump over the net. Gigantic fish. Finally, they caught the fish, and the fish said, Let me go. Las mechop. Daf zayn in Rimenev. This is a story from you know, 200 years ago. He said, let, you know, let me go. I need to go to Rimenev. I, 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 I'm not going to get what I need here. In, in, in Auschwitz scene, I need to go to Rimenev and be by Reb and and that's where I'll get my tikkun and, and, and taka. Well, it says fish there. That's not <laughs> the name of the company that's selling this property is fish. <coughs> that can't be a coincidence. So, and they said taka, the fish was caught in Rimenev. And the Rebbe Mendela ate it on Shabbos, had big kavanas and so forth. That's the story that that Rabbi Kornreich would tell often. Um, 
the other, uh, you know, the stories about Rabbi Kornreich's own life are just incredible. He, um, he managed to escape from the camp. I don't know if he was in Auschwitz or in another camp. He managed to escape, and he joined the partisans. This is a story that my Rav, Badal Chaim Tovim, Rabbi Fishbein Shlita, he tells that um, this one, uh, one Sunday morning, or maybe it was a Monday morning, I think it was Monday morning, Labor Day, actually. They were, he was having a bar mitzvah there in the shul. It was a Russian kid, uh, you know, Russian Jewish kid, and he was having a pot fillin' and and and, uh, and and having aliyah, and that was his bar mitzvah Monday morning. Like my bar mitzvah was was also Monday morning was Martin Luther King Day. In, in Young Israel New Hyde Park, so Rabbi Fishbein was making such a bar mitzvah on Labor Day, and you know, so it was after the end of the season. Um, and Rabbi Kornreich, who owned the bungalow colony not too far away, um, we have videos of Rabbi Kornreich at our shul dinner. You can see on YouTube on on this YouTube channel. So. He, he came to Daven there because, you know, there was no minion in his bungalow colony. It was already after the season. He was just, you know, closing up. <coughs> and he, um, and he said, can I say something? You know, and he didn't speak English very well, you know. He actually spoke English pretty well, considering that he was, uh, you know, a survivor. Was born in Poland, you know, but uh, you know, he he had an accent, of course, and not really much of a, but like you know, he was like an old, he was an old man, and you know, maggot, and and he said. Um, He said, can I say something? And, and Rabbi Fishbein was a little scared. You know, these kids are going to lose their patience. And uh, what, what? And he said, but, you know, Minna he, he allowed Rabbi Kornreich to speak, and he was so happy. And he said, these kids were mesmerized. The whole family and everybody who was there <coughs> were mesmerized by the story. So Rabbi Kornreich said, you know, he was born in Auschwitz. He is... You know, he said, I wish I had a bar mitzvah like you had, because my bar mitzvah was in Auschwitz. Um, his father had managed to smuggle in, to fill in something, and he, and he had it with him, and he, he escaped from the, from the camp. And he joined the partisans. He was a teenager. And he had these tefillin, and his whole family had been killed. And they were traveling in the in the in the woods, and um, and he lost his tefillin. And he told the other guys there, um, many of them were not Jewish. He said, "I I lost something very valuable. I need to find it." And they said, "The Nazis are on our trail." You know, uh, I mean, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll kill you. I guess when we say that his, his bar mitzvah was in Auschwitz, I mean, I, I think, I meaning before the war, I guess, but he still managed to, to hide his tefillin. I don't know exactly all the details of the story, but they said, we're going to kill you. you. You can't abandon us here. And you can't, and, and the Nazis are going to catch us. He said, go ahead, shoot me. What do I need to live for? I lost my whole family. This is all I have to live for. Go ahead. So then they, they saw his courage, and they and they um, they helped him find the tefillin very quickly. Then they... Uh, He, he survived the war. He got married. 
I don't have time right now to tell the rest of the story, but um, they went, they moved to Paris briefly. The doctors there said his wife, it was impossible for her to have children. That didn't stop them. They didn't give up hope. Um, they, uh, <laughs> they, they, uh, they went to different rabbis for brachas. They had a big family. Their children are rabbis now. She loved her Rebbe, Ser, um, not Sarat Vishnitz, he was a, he was a, he was a mechutin with the Biala Rebbe, with the Sarat Vishnitz Rebbe. So his one son who was, was uh, aided by Biala, she loved her Rebbe, the other son was uh, aided by Sarat Vishnitz, his cousin Vishnitz Rebbe. I have a lot more to talk about Rabbi Kornoich, I don't have time right now. Um, but I'm going to miss him a lot. I hadn't seen him for a couple of years, but he was, he was just a special person. You just, you just felt good being around him. Um, I remember he, he told me how, and I feel guilty because I'm not dressed in a chesidish levush, but how he was all, even right away when he came to America or in Europe or wherever he was after the war, he always wore a chesidish levush. He always had a beard, no matter what. He said he remembers when he lived on the Lower East Side, and uh, his Rebbe, the Baba Rebbe, was on the Upper West Side, but he, he would go over the bridge to Williamsburg to the Satmar Rebbe's Tish, and he said there was only, by the old Satmar Rav, the big Satmar Rav, he said there was barely a minion by the Tish, maybe 20 people, and he said the whole Tish, the only ones with beards were the Rebbe, the Gaba, Rebbe Yassel Ashkenazi, and, and he himself, Rebbe Herschel Kornreich. In those days, the Satmars, they were all clean-shaven, with bent-down hats. You know, that's how it was in those days. Well, God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe, comment, and we'll see you later. I'm not saying anything wrong with that. Just, it's just fascinating how times have changed and, and how there's been a renaissance of Judaism. All right, take care.